Well, that was fun. That was very fun. That's a good distraction from the world right now. Yes. <laughs> I wish we could be doing that right now. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so if you couldn't tell, tonight's, uh, what are we on, episode four? We're on episode four. Yeah, it's Thursday. I know what day it is. Wow, that's, that's impressive. That's like, I don't know, an achievement yeah. during quarantine. Yeah, so, so yeah. why don't you tell people what happened today with our children in quarantine? <laughs> I have two stories, one you don't know about. Yeah. We'll share that for when our guests are here because okay. it involves them. But the other one is... So one of the tasks our son had to do for school this week was to practice writing his sight words. Yeah. And they suggested either like a baking cooking tray with um, shaving cream on it or rice or sand or something else. And I was like, oh, the shaving cream. Your mom was a yeah, teacher. Yeah. She's talked about doing that a lot and said, that's so great. And I'm like, oh, this is a great idea. So we like get through our words and then he starts kind of going crazy. We're in our bathroom and. Then Addie comes in, our oldest, and she wants to play and do it. And it was under control. Turned into shaving cream apocalypse. Oh, my gosh. It was. I mean, by the end, our son was covered, like, head to toe. I mean, thankfully, they were in the bathroom. So yeah. I just, like, shoved them into the shower. But I was like, oh. <laughs> I wanted to fire myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're still in quarantine. Hopefully you're not going as crazy as yeah. we are. Um, but we have some very special guests. And if you couldn't tell from the video, we are doing Crowded Barrel tonight. Woot woot. So, um, you know, ladies first, we'll add to the stream. Yes. Emma Niemeyer. Hi, Emma, how hi, are you? Emma. Good. How are y'all doing? We good. are doing good. And, you know, there's this other guy who's kind of sort of known around the whiskey world. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> how are you, man? I'm good. How are you guys doing? So uh, let me ask you guys, are you guys tired of receiving um, FDA rules emails from me yet? <laughs> um, am I allowed to say yes? Yes, you <laughs> yes, are. You are. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. To am say I allowed to say that I've already set up a Google alert to automatically move those emails to a different part of my inbox? <laughs> So I haven't seen Maybe. one for like a week. That's a really good idea, Daniel. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I got you. I got you. No, I have to chat with you all first, though. So today, we one of the things that we're sampling today, we actually didn't have a bottle of. So the kids and I, we took a quick drive to the Wizard Academy today to pick it up. And as we were leaving, I got the privilege of teaching my children or trying to teach my children what the word cult means. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a new like mural up that says, I, <laughs> it's like, what's academy? Totally not a cult. And so totally like, oh. not a cult. I was like, the kids were like, what's a cult? And I'm like, oh, you got it. No, <laughs> I quit. I'm not doing this hey, anymore. <laughs> that's nothing compared to Rex having to explain to uh, his other family members why his like three-year-old daughter says, Bastards <laughs> on a regular basis. Yeah, that's yeah. better. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, well, a so thank of, you for that. A little bit of credit here. Christina <laughs> says, forget Daniel. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Christina. <laughs> that's true. Yes. <laughs> oh, you have some Legion here. Josh is saying the same thing. So. All right. <laughs> uh oh, Daniel. Um, anyway, so. The verbal, verbal way doesn't count. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> Um, so look, we, we are, we've talked about this all week, but mm -hmm. the, the point of this whole uh, series is to go through the Texas whiskey trail. We're going alphabetically. Mm -hmm. And this whole purpose is to try to take our minds off of the world that we are living in yeah. every day. Um, yeah. the craziness that's going on and focus on the thing that we all love to do, which is whiskey. Right. And, um, we have really, really interesting whiskeys here tonight because mm -hmm. Crowded Barrel was the first ever to take a blend of certified Texas whiskeys and make them a thing. And the first time was two years ago at the Texas Whiskey Festival, correct? Or I guess a, a little over a year ago. 
Um, mm-hmm. And then the second yeah. one was this year's Texas Whiskey Festival. Yeah. So, um, you know, Daniel, why don't you talk a little bit about what made you want to do blends? Because I know you're, I know you love blending anyway, but what made you get into it? And what did you love about these particular projects? Uh, to, to me, one of my favorite things to do with whiskey in general, including at my house, is to just mix things together. So I've been doing that for a very long time. And in the whiskey industry, uh, John Glazier and, you know, Compass Box is one of my favorite lines of whiskey. And and so I've always been fascinated and drawn to uh, people mixing things together and creating kind of a new alchemy, right? I mean, it happens in every distillery when you're creating a release of something. Um, you know, when uh, the Balconist guys are creating their single malt, they're blending barrels together, right? So it's just this like chemist lab, beautiful alchemy. But when you're doing it with completely different spirits, it's a, even more interesting to me. So um, I've always loved that you find that a lot in scotch and I you don't find that a lot in American whiskey. Yeah. And so as soon as we got a distillery, my first goal was, okay guys, we need to blend people's whiskeys together. Yeah. And honestly, this Texas whiskey blend, the first one, was the my first chance to do that, and luckily, uh, Balconis, Andalusia, and Iron Root were kind enough, and maybe crazy enough to <laughs> give us their whiskey and let us try to create yeah. something from it, uh, trusting that we wouldn't just really ruin something and then put their name on it. Right. Well, and I don't, th- I don't definitely don't think you have, um, Emma. How long have you been with Crowder Barrel, and what has your involvement been in in those blends as well? Because I, I remember watching videos of you going through the different barrels and doing your own blend for I think it was, um, for your first release of um, Eleanor, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember, I remember that video where you were really getting into all the different barrels that you were you were sampling from. Were you part of this process as well? So for the first, I've been with Crowder Barrel for two years now, but the first blend was, um, I had less involvement in that one and more of just like the bottling and um, practical part of that process. But the um, the second festival blend is one that Daniel and I worked on. And um, that one, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And it was yeah. just fun to work on it because it's you just get to play with whiskey and combine different flavors and figure out what works and what doesn't and use what doesn't work to try to figure out, okay, well, what went wrong here? <laughs> and then yeah. try to go in the right kind of direction. Um, well, yeah. well, Daniel, I, I, you know, I don't want to presume almost everybody in the comments is a tribe member or something like that. You know, there's lots, <laughs> of, there's lots of tribe members going, uh, tribe conversations happening back and forth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, for those of, for those who may be watching this later, who are not tribe members now, w- talk a little bit about the tribe and the fact that you guys are the first crowdsourced distillery. Uh, so we started doing videos, shoot, was it like three or f- almost four years ago, maybe more than four. Oh God. Wow. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I was this gray when we started. Um, <laughs> We started doing videos ages ago and it turned into this really amazing community of non-snobby whiskey drinkers who would get together in the comments of the YouTube channel. And then that sort of spawned a Facebook group that exploded. And then at a certain point, Rex and I were shooting six videos a week and with no income stream on it. And yeah, totally not a cult. (laughs) And um, eventually what happened was we, we, um, needed to bring in some kind of income so that Rex could keep spending all of his time editing these videos. <laughs> and uh, so we decided to start a little Patreon as like a crowdfunding monthly sourced income stream. And the tribe uh, showed up in such large numbers and got so involved, we became the third largest per capita funded Patreon on the whole platform oh. in like six months. Wow. And so we went, crap, now what do we do? We can't just, you know, have all these people and just keep shooting videos. That's what we were already doing. So yeah. instead we said, what if we started a distillery and let them make all the choices? And yeah. now here we are. <laughs> well, and Emma, you know, the tribe, we've we've obviously been there to Crowded Barrel. And every Friday, every Friday you have a get together and the tribe comes together from various parts of the world. Um, and uh, that's got to be a little bit difficult right now for the fact that nobody can come and be together. We all got to social distance and isolate. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that because you're, you're there all the time too. And it's got to be weird not seeing the people that you've come accustomed to. 
Yeah, I've definitely gotten a lot of emails of canceled trips, and um, we've had a lot of tribe members just say like, hey, I was going to come X weekend and pick up my bottles and meet you guys and say hi, but I can't anymore. And so that's kind of a bummer just seeing like how many connections that could have been made with people. And because what I love about the Friday get togethers is that there are people that travel from all over the world to the distillery, and then they meet people that they've talked with online and comments and the YouTube video comments and have made friends and it's their chance to meet the community in person. And um, so I think that's just kind of sad that that doesn't get to happen um, for the next Mm -hmm. bit of life, but um, we will be back and it will be amazing. And we'll have all of our people um, back through our doors. So we're just looking forward to that and um, being able to welcome everyone back. (laughs) Yeah. What's it like for you? You you, you get to bastard everybody in on on Friday. (laughs) Are you are you like bastarding people in via like face FaceTime? No, I just I just bastard alone in my office, Uh, and then and then in the background you hear the sounds of you know Elliot Smith playing, and I'm sad, and like (laughs) all of you mad. Here's a here's a good comment. So Friday, <laughs> you feel as welcome at the Crowded Barrel as you do at home. Oh, yeah, that's true, man. That Friday gathering has turned into such a wild event, and it is astounding to me the amount of people who don't realize they're coming to that same Friday who say, "Hi, I'm so and so," and they're like, "Hey, I know you." Yeah, and it turns out they're friends on the, in the Facebook community or on YouTube. Yeah, um, because of the Whiskey Tribe community. So yeah, I missed that, but I think. Um, that what's been most exciting to me is how this community has gotten behind supporting all of the distillery and all of the bartenders and keeping mm-hmm. people employed by doubling down on bottle sales and trying in any way they can to reach out and help support the staff at Crowded Barrel. So that awesome. our community has gotten strongly behind us to keep this thing alive. And I don't, I don't know where we would be if it wasn't for the Patreon and the Whiskey Tread. Yeah, we were talking to Blackland Distilling last night, mm. and um, he mentioned the same thing, which was that you know they were they were doing a sanitizer program, and they basically ran out. They gave almost all of it away to local Fort Worth Fire and EMS, and then then yeah. they saved some for people to come to the you know drive up mm-hmm. and and grab stuff. And uh, he said that almost everybody was trying to buy a bottle just so that they could right. keep them going and knowing that they're they're losing all the. Uh, tasting room, yeah. cocktail sales. Um, so yeah. it was right. nice to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of that, we'll, we'll take this opportunity and show real quickly uh, something that we have been working on for a while. We finally got the shirts in today. So we're going to show Alicia and her family who just got the first Still Strong TX t-shirts. Mm-hmm. So uh, for those of you that don't know what this program is, it's it's our effort to kind of keep things going in the, the sanitizer effort, all the work that we're doing with all the different regulatory agencies so thanks to Alicia and her whole family for, for kind of modeling this mm-hmm. for us. But if you want to, you can get a t-shirt at texaswhiskeytrailstore.com and that'll go to support the Texas Whiskey yeah. Association's efforts around this. So thank you all for, for being a part of that and enough of the, the COVID talk. Um, oh, the CVID. Yeah. yeah. I'm calling it the CVID. Yeah. I don't think anyone else is. Yeah. Let's Yeah, I don't think, I think you're going to start that, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. Hashtag influencer. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so what we, for those of you that are watching for the first time tonight, basically what we're going to do is we're taking a tour through the Texas Whiskey Trail, tasting different certified whiskeys throughout the trail. Yeah. And tonight we have the the Festival Blend One and Festival Blend Two, which okay. are all certified Texas whiskeys because right. they're combined from certified Texas whiskeys. Um, so we have both of them here. I'll tell you which one they are. They're number one and number two right here. And okay. then we're going to get the notes. And uh, I'd like to ask Daniel to kind of give a, a very brief primer. You know, don't, you know, obviously don't give away everything you give away in the marketing school. <laughs> just a <laughs> well, little bit. <laughs> we can get it all away. <laughs> so your primer, are you talking about a primer on just nosing and tasting, right? Yeah, like uh, one of the things I've been talking to her about is, and, and you know, I learned this in your class, but um, mm-hmm. you know, the different ways you can describe things, where you know, sharp and rounded and and bright and dull, and you can use other sensory perception things mm-hmm. to describe the flavors that you're getting to. 
And this one is going to be a blend of lots of different things. So you're probably going to have some confusion at first, but yeah. maybe not. Maybe you're going to find something that you absolutely identify. Well, so what, what, what would you recommend? Well, it? what all I would say is just to keep it super simple is most of what's happening is going to happen in the nose, not in the mouth. The mouth is just going to add to what's happening in the nose. Okay. So, uh, so don't get too obsessed with trying to taste it too quickly or, yeah. uh, but know that even after you taste it, the nose is where you're going to discover things. And then remember that your, your brain is a pattern recognition machine. And so your job isn't to discover some objective reality that lives in this glass. Your right. job is to smell the whiskey and ask yourself, what does this remind me of? That's okay. it. Yeah. What does it remind me of? Because all you can do is recall patterns that you've already built in your head for other yeah. things, for other foods and other uh, baked goods or outdoors yeah. or right. Yeah. And so just, just keep asking yourself, not what is in this whiskey, but instead, yeah. what does this remind me of? Okay. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah, no, that's good. Our daughter's actually really good at that. Not at tasting. We don't let her taste. Yes. But and, <laughs> and she said the other night, we let her smell something. She's like, it smells like the dust that rises from the piano when you press a piano key down. Oh, yes. Aww. That's exactly it. Yeah. Right? Awesome. And I was just like, yeah. well, I give up it, again. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I'm never going to achieve that. <laughs> we need to get her on the podcast. <laughs> I mean, that, right. that, that is such a specific note. But it's, you know? it's that's but it, what's so But I know what that smells like. Memory. Yeah. You know? yeah, one of the ones I, I used to get regularly is an old paperback. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. The book of an yeah. old paperback yeah. book. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Well, let's get to the whiskey. All right. Well, let's go. Let's start uh, with uh, Festival Blend number one. For those okay. of you watching at home, it's this bottle right here. That beautiful, what, is, what was that considered? I guess an antique raised seal. You know? Yeah. Emma, Emma hand hammered those for every bottle. <laughs> nice. You like chiseled it every, out of, out yeah, of bones. I, <laughs> Everyone. Every single, yeah. every single one. Yeah. Things I do for this place, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, actually, let's go ahead. I, I think you probably, you might know the what's in this blend, but but what are you getting right off the bat? Well, I mean, it, I do very much smell the balcones, but that's probably because we just had balcones yeah, two, two nights, nights ago. ago. So clarify, I'm, how about if I just keep asking you questions? Because I'm going to... I'm always going to push you. So there's something that uh, Chris Maddock does, our writing instructor in our writing class. And he yeah. says, tell me an author that you like. And then someone will say, oh, I like, um, I don't know, uh, Agatha Christie. They say, yeah. well, why do you like her? Right? You say, well, because yeah. she writes really well. It's like, well, but what do you mean by that? Well, sh she writes really suspenseful. Okay, well, what do you mean by suspenseful? How? Well, you're reading and you don't know what's going to happen. And yeah, but how is she doing yeah. that? Yeah. So doing it with short sentences long. Is that yeah. so if you just keep pushing? So you said it reminds you of Balconis. What what marks Balconis for you? Oh, I don't know. But I do like as in general. <laughs> <laughs> you're giving me way the too best credit, answer. Daniel. The, the, the quit is strong with her, so <laughs> yeah. Me and my son. Um, I don't know. No, but <laughs> I, no, I'm getting a lot of floral. Like it smells very floral. And the other no, night, I got a lot of floral. Yeah. What kind of flowers? Because uh, not all flowers are equal, right? You're gonna like roses. That. I mean, um, just think of the flowers that you know. Roses. There's carnations have that weird, not quite sweet, yeah, no, but like uh, plant-like smell. Um, maybe like yeah, tulips. Maybe like a rose or a peony. No, peony is probably too bright. Probably like a rose. All right, so kind of like a darker floral note instead of like a green floral note. Yeah, yeah. So like a heady, perfumey kind of floral. Yes, yeah. Okay. There you go. That's good, perfumey. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can agree to things, but coming up with some of these on my own is not so easy. Um, no, but I definitely saw that. I don't, beyond that, like I know, is Andalusia's in here. Is it Striker or is it Revenant? Oak? Yep. Yep, it's striker. Okay. Not bad. <gasps> what what? So I guess that. I wonder why. Well, what we is the striker what's what, the striker three weeks ago? So by the way, Emma, John in the comments is stealing your horse cookie reference. I just wanted to call him out on that. <gasps> John. <laughs> <laughs> How dare Emma, you? Emma always describes Balcona as horse cookie. 
Milan. Oh, and, <laughs> yeah. John's trying to take credit That's for awesome. it. awesome. <laughs> I don't think I actually. I mean, I think. I, are you talking about like those little horse pellets that you feed them? Is that they're what like so. They're like these little discs, like that, that big. Yeah. Getting this aiming right is kind of hard on this. Yeah, um, yeah. And they're they're just like this condensed cookie of grain and molasses and. <laughs> I feel like we should sing the I feel like we should sing the Brady Bunch. That way. <laughs> the whiskey bunch. The whiskey bunch. No, I like Jared, Jared. Now. <laughs> but I like Jared's comment, Emma. What the <laughs> All right. Okay. No, okay, so they smell amazing. They just smell so like sweet and earthy and like the grain and um, so I would give these to, I would volunteer at my friend's barn and then we would give the horses these cookies after we'd ride them or just cause I had maybe favorites and would give them extra treats and they, um, they just smelled amazing. And it's like, okay. sometimes like I always get this note in a Balcona's whiskey that it, it tastes how I imagine those horse cookies would taste like based off of how the cookies smell. Yeah. Come on, let's be honest. No. You, okay. Let's be honest. You've tried you some horse cookies in your day. Yeah. I, I really it. haven't, but you know what? I should have. I, I missed out. I missed out. I bet you could get some. I bet you could I order some on Amazon. Probably could. Yeah. Uh, it might, might come a little slowly because it's not toilet paper. You, you nailed it. You nailed it. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. Hold on. There's a follow up. Are you supposed to give horses cookies? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're made for them. I prefer Oreos. Not normally. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So back to the nosing. <laughs> so you you called out Striker and uh, and I'm getting you know you know it was about kind of single malt. Yeah. So. No, I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, okay. Well, so we, well. <laughs> but that's so but that's good though. The whole point of this though is, I mean, brutally honest. Yes. With everyone. Yes. And myself. Yes. So, so what else? I mean, you noticed you noticed Striker, which I think is, you know, that, I mean that that is a very distinct Texas yeah. whiskey flavor. Yeah. Right. And we just had it a couple nights ago too, so we had a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you got Balcones. Do you remember or do you know the third? Well, didn't you say, is it Harbinger? It's Iron Root. I know it's Iron it, Root. You know it is Iron Root. I don't remember which one it is. That's uh, their Bloody Butcher Corn one. There's actually two um, in there. And then it's also their Purple Corn. There it is. Okay. So yeah. I think I might have seen that the licorices are in the comments. What? So maybe they could tell us exactly if. Hey, whether... never trust the ginger. They could be going in disguise. It might not actually be them. Well, well, <laughs> well ba okay, let's see. Jonathan actually said something. Oh, wait, that's Christina. Sorry, Christina. I'll go back. Is you. Oh, my gosh. It keeps moving. Uh, you get too many comments. Uh, when her <laughs> 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 oh, 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 oh. Emma's so Emma's soul just died a little bit. <laughs> oh, oh, Jonathan, come on. Uh, <laughs> and we had him, barely had anything. Yeah, there I know. <laughs> by the way, uh, by the way, Jonathan, thank you for finally liking the Texas Whiskey Trail on Facebook. I saw that the other day. <laughs> oh man, I the, real big guys, the other day, the other day I liked one of my sister's posts and like. Three minutes later, I get a text from her with a screen capture of Daniel liked your post. And then underneath it, she said, I'm going to need you to love my posts from now on, not just like them. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, so That's true. Awesome. <laughs> um, let's see. He said, Jonathan says, bloody butcher in one barrel, purple in the other. Okay. So it was, yeah, it was two, there you go. two single barrels. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Man, there's so... Oh. Um, and, and, uh, we're, there's a lot of gingers in the comments here. So, I mean, we got, <laughs> so, so you pissed off like half of the those, gingers. Those poor bastards. <laughs> half of our they comments. They got it hard enough already. Like, yeah. Why do I need to pile one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you, what do you think? Do you, do you, you, you said it feels like Harbinger, which we did have recently. So that's not too dissimilar. I'm so gun shy about that though, because. I totally confused just off of nosing mm -hmm. um, giant rye and harbinger. Yeah. Last week. So Which, I'm like, like I'm kind of nervous to 
try to identify anything. Which I, which I will <laughs> say, you know, the giant rye is 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 a very bourbony rye for especially for a hundred percent rye. Um, so it wasn't too far out of the bounds. So I'll, I'll give you a lot more credit. No, I that. just feel like I'm. I mean, to Daniel's point about experience and <laughs> memories. Oh, I feel like if, did, did you choke or did you choke on my words because I was so wrong? Uh, no, I just. <laughs> While I was drinking, <laughs> oh. and then I inhaled whiskey. <laughs> was it this comment? It was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh, that hurt. Oh, that's funny. These comments are dangerous. I know. Jared's probably left. He's like, forget this mess. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, shenanigans. We need them yeah. right now. Um, no, but I feel like this very much like just invokes being at a distillery, which may seem like a cop out yeah. answer, but it's just like, it's smelling the mash and the cook. And yeah. what is it? Daniel's <laughs> Daniel's a ginger. He just shaves his head and dyes his beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. No. I'm going to have to speak in sign language for the rest of this video. <laughs> <laughs> Well, lucky for you, I know sign language. Yeah, she does. Actually. Oh, crap. <laughs> that, that was the foreign language I took in high school. So I was going to fake it. <clears throat> Is that foreign? It counted towards the foreign language credit. Nice. So yeah. There you go. That's at least what they were calling it back then. They probably don't call it that yeah. anymore. It's probably like your second language. So I'm a <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> from from the Emma from the uh, from blend one, what do you get out of it, and what do you? Uh, is there any specific notes? Not just identifying the distilleries, but any specific notes that you might be able to help her out with? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, on the nose, I do. You were talking about floral notes, and I completely get that too. And I I was almost thinking like honeysuckle in a way because it's kind of sweet oh. but still floral yeah. and yeah, uh, I have never like I haven't had this blend in a very long time I just opened up my bottle of it for tonight and, and I'm remembering how much I liked it and I don't remember ever <laughs> identifying like honeysuckle so that's kind of new it's yeah. a different it's like yeah. coming to a new whiskey again uh, yeah. and on the palette I kind of get the the striker kind of mid to back yeah. of the palette and it's, yeah. it's just a nice little kick that. Oh, and also, yeah. I, I, it, I was lo looking at it, but it's bottled at I think it's I'm right <clears throat> here, here, but fifty eight percent. So you're getting wow. a you're getting a good thick kick of yeah. Of, of, yeah you you could try adding water, yeah, <laughs> or something. just drinking water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think it does a nice job of just representing Texas whiskey. You know, like I know that, like mm -hmm. that's kind of vague, but it does. It kind of just it encaptures piece, piece mm -hmm. of so many different things that I've tasted before. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, then let's let's. Do you want to move on to number two? Sure. And give us your notes on that one, because let's try not looking. Did, did you read what the I components did. are? <clears throat> okay. I mean, Ooh, I, I saw you set the bottles up. So I it sounded like you were cursing on your show. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally about to say that. <laughs> Let's like, it again. What the? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you spilled some. Oh well. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. Is there Wait, you spilled some of the whiskey? I, I did. It was like four drops. Is there like a? Uh, is there? Is there a ceremony? <laughs> is there a ceremony for for spilling a little whiskey? Yeah, I just Emma comes over to your house and just slaps you. <laughs> <laughs> she takes the bottle away. You're yeah. not ready. Yeah, for this. You're you not don't sure. deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I'm having a hard time with this one. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like, well, well, have well, one thing to say about it. Okay. Well, well, let's uh, without trying to identify distilleries. Is there anything oh. that you can recognize? No, that's what I'm saying. I'm having a hard time doing. You got nothing. I got nothing. It's just a big just, white void. Yeah, of... y'all chat. Give me another minute. Whoa. Sometimes it can help if you start broad. Like, try not to be so specific, but just start with a category. Like, is it sweet? Is it spicy? Is it earthy? And then from there, kind of like what Daniel okay. was saying earlier, you can specify and narrow it down once you kind of have this general yeah. direction. Okay. Um, but trying to be specific when you have a world of options is it can be overwhelming. Right. Well, I wouldn't say sweet. 
Okay. So we'll cross that off. Process of elimination here. Maybe earthy. I think that would, that's a pretty good descriptor. Earthy? Earthy, like, like grassy earthy or like just dirt earthy? <clears throat> like a field. Kind of like the other night when I thought I like smelled a field. Yeah. Yeah. It smells like kind of being, it smells... This is the very interesting part of the evening where we all sit with our noses in glasses. <laughs> hey, Mr. Rogers would have loved this part of the show. Yeah, he that's would have. right. <laughs> that's right. We would have taken our time. No, it kind yeah, of we'll just me. feed the fish for twenty minutes. Yeah, it reminds me of a warm, humid summer night on Ooh. my grandmother's farm in Kentucky. Hi. Nice. See, now that is a note. Yeah, because it's yeah, right it is to you. Yeah, think of what goes into that. So you've got the, is it humid in Kentucky in the summers? Yes. So you've got that density to the air. Yeah. You've got the open grass field and dirt. Mm-hmm. You've got. Maybe they just cut hay. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got maybe fresh cut grass. Mm -hmm. You've got, are you on the porch? Is it an old wooden house? Does it have the smell of like an old deck, the old wooden porch? Yeah, but that's not what I'm smelling. Okay. It's more just like being out in that, like, so they have a massive, she has this like massive yard, I guess. Yeah. With that's surrounded by the house and a couple of different fields. Yeah. But you have to walk a decent distance. Get cattle you, grazing fields. Yeah. Before you get to the fields, but it kind of smells like you're like, I'm standing in the middle of the yard. There's a couple barns. Yeah. And Daniel, it, it, <laughs> I don't know if we've talked about this, but this is like the, this was like the, one of the hardest things of the first five years of our marriage is we would always go to this farm <clears throat> in Kentucky, and it's in Frankfurt and it's literally like five minutes away from Buffalo Trace. Mm. Right. And it's yeah. this quintessential Kentucky bluegrass farm with right. just beautiful. And, and it has that old, yeah. you know, patio with the swinging door, you know, the, the clanging, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Oh gosh, the screen door, you know, mm -hmm. screen door, that kind of that old <clears throat> smell, you know, sound mm -hmm. and smell. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And I think I, I, I think I know what you're getting out of it. Like which particular component. It also reminds me of a little bit of that, that kind of place right after it's just rained. Yes. You know, but it's not still raining. Yeah. It's that fresh, like petrichor kind of, right. Yeah. The Emmett did that. Is, is it just me or does this whiskey taste different now that it's been sitting in the bottle for a while? I'm getting notes on this blend I've never gotten before. And it's not, it's making me nervous. Hmm. <laughs> so I feel like I'm tasting. Hmm. Look at Jared's comment. <laughs> well, look, there's a, there's a whiskey called Floki that's made by, with sheep dung, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, instead of peat, sheep dung. Yeah, oh. they're talking about we should do that in Texas, but use cow patties. Why not, oh. man? I'm from Hereford, which is you know, if you if you know or you know where Hereford is, maybe. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So it's sorry. The, the joke is you go to, like, you, from Amarillo, you go 20 minutes south until you smell it, and 20 minutes west until you step in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. But why in the world do the marketing guys want to use cow patties to? To, with whiskey it's yeah. it would be a, dude we everybody would talk about that that's true they it doesn't about. have it yeah like jared said it doesn't have a smell it's just okay yeah you know it, it's not no. like you're putting poo in your whiskey Marketing. all right <laughs> we're gonna distill <laughs> we're gonna distill the thing yeah <laughs> get rid of all the grossness yeah i mean you know Mark look, Ty, look ty phelps has a, a peat shed we yeah. can just put cow patties in there <laughs> <laughs> He'll never let us back. <laughs> I don't know. He might just tell him it's just tell him it's Texas. Science. <laughs> so, no, I feel like I'm getting a little bit like like grain of some sort. Well, that would be a good note for whiskey. <laughs> do I detect I quit. I quit. I'm done. You can do this. I'm a lot. I'm a lot of you married, but I'm a, <laughs> but. <laughs> Sorry, that was a shitty comment. Oh. Ty, put Ty's comments up there. Yeah. Whoever's in, whoever's highlighting those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude, it, this is happening. Llamas are oh so in right now. Llamas are so in right now. Wow. They Llamas are. are so in no, right now. They are. They have like, no, like 
in decoration stores. <laughs> right, right until they spit in your face. Like in t-shirts, like people like don't llama about it. Like don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like there's like these, I can, I can picture these party plates at Target right now that have llamas on them. I'm just envisioning like a new Zoolander movie. It's like llamas are so in right now. <laughs> <laughs> That movie They're so awesome. hot right now. Everyone's walking around with their pet llama and their See, like, airplanes with their, as their comfort animal. I like Christina's post. This is this is te- yeah, you know Texas that's Texas Pete. Pete. <laughs> yeah. So, well, so let's no, ask no. let's ask Emma Emma because she was involved in the actual blend of this. No, Emma actually was instrumental in this blend because we we had to. I'm going to give the backstory a little bit when we handed it to Emma, which was Jake and I, along with the distilleries involved in this, sort of sat down and came up with some blends and blended it. This is the short version. Um, and then like three weeks later, it sat in the bottle for three weeks and Jake called. He's like, hey, have you tried that? <laughs> it doesn't taste anything like when we blended it. And I went and tried it and it was, it was not good. Really? And uh so we went crap let's just get in the barrels so the three distilleries sent us all the barrels and we had to start over and that's when we handed it over to emma and she She fixed it emma's badass yes yes. yeah yeah so should i i'm just going to go ahead and read the distilleries then because this is made up of it's a blend of 50 percent lone elm wheat whiskey which is what i think that you're getting when you when yes. you talk about the field, yeah, I was which That's spot on. That seems weird to me because they don't grow wheat. Well, they grow. I mean, it's very it, they they get it very close to where the distillery is on the the uh, Trinity River bed. It's okay. it's red winter. <clears throat> No, I'm saying, sorry, I'm saying she's saying her memory oh, and her memory is not yeah. sweet. Sorry, sorry, sorry. On yeah. Penny's farm, I they don't grow wheat. Understood. Yeah. But it's still, I mean, yeah, I mean, can you really smell the difference in growing wheat versus growing barley in a field? I don't know that oh, you can. I have no idea. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still a grass that's yeah. growing. Right? Yeah. And there's plenty of that. There's yeah. plenty of grass all around there yeah. in different forms and whatnot. <laughs> so 50% uh, lone elm wheat whiskey, which is, I think, 95% wheat, 5% barley. So it's almost an entirely wheat yeah. whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, 35, 37.5 Ranger Creek rye. So you're getting another oh, okay. grassy yeah. note there. And then 12.5% treaty oak, I'm assuming goes still bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's good stuff. It's actually what we have. have on. <clears throat> so the, the primary component of that is the, the lone elm wheat whiskey. Yeah. And Teresa said wheat usually lends a soft creamy flavor. And I agree with that in every case, except for wheat grown in, wheat whiskey in Texas, like Lone Elm yeah. is not soft and pretty. It is, it's, it's a beautiful whiskey, yeah. but it is dark and deep and rich and dense, right? Uh, all, of all the wheat whiskeys Rex and I have tried, not a single one of them even tiptoes into the category of Lone Elm. Yeah. That's their own thing. Yeah. Sorry, Daniel, but I have to show this. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing. I uh, I have a really good uh, Instagram following, and uh, I spend a lot of time developing my Pinterest board. <laughs> yeah, I love the Pinterest. Pinterest vision boards or something. Yeah, vision board. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What is it that you say you do here? Well, Emma, uh, when you were working on this, like, what were you? I know you kind of go where the whiskey's taking you, but like as you were kind of progressing through, what were you kind of trying to hit? At first, I don't know why, but I just had in my head at first, like, oh, I'm going to use treaty oak as a base. You know, it just seemed yeah. like normal and right to have the bourbon be the base. And yeah. I think as we were going through, um, I just never, there were just like certain notes that would always kind of take over the rye was really strong in there yeah and um just kind of started being like eh, i'm just gonna try each one as a base and see what happens and when lono was the base it just turned out really nice and it balanced out all of the spikes from the rye like the rye stood out with flavor but it no longer dominated the entire palette and so it was like okay this is surprising like i wouldn't initially have thought to do lono as the base 
Yeah. But then from mm-hmm. there, um, just kind of finding the balance because for me, and especially like what Daniel was saying with the Lone Elm, it is different from a lot of wheat whiskeys. And I definitely get that grassy kind of note that you brought up at the very beginning. And I get grassiness and like that spice from rye as well, along with a little mintiness. And so just trying to like balance all of those notes, which Mm -hmm. for me kind of are in one category and theme in a lot of whiskeys and trying to bring in the bourbon enough to like bring some sweetness, maybe some nuttiness and just like balance that out. And, um, it was interesting. It was very unexpected the direction that it went. I, yeah. just, I never anticipated that it would have turned out the way it did, but I'm really glad it did. I love it. Um, <clears throat> I feel like Emma should just do the rest of the series with you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, well, we can't. <laughs> Um, that no, that that's a, that's a, an amazing way to describe it. And for those of you that are possibly watching from another place and you can't get your hands on some lone elm or something like that, it, I think the st- telling the story of them is pretty important because mm-hmm. they really, really, you know, obviously dedicated to wheat whiskey. Like yeah. they just went to, they just said we're going to do wheat whiskey, and then they were like four or five years into it before they released anything. Mm-hmm. Right. And I mean, and even in smaller barrels in Texas heat and those, I mean. I, if you, if you propose that as a business plan, I don't think that anybody would say, yeah, that's a good <clears throat> idea. Yeah. Right. But somehow, some way Texas made this amazing. And, um, I, I think it's, it's worth noting about mm-hmm. how, how special that particular yeah. uh, and how unique that product yeah. is in yeah. the world of whiskey. Right. Yeah. Um, Daniel, you, you talk a lot about like when you're giving notes, you say kind of like glassy, spiky, you know, bright, um, brittle, things like that. Is there a, a Texas note that you see is kind of dominant throughout the state other than kick you in the teeth? Uh, I just think it's dense. Dense. If I had to pick one thing, I just think there's a density to most mm. Texas, not all, but a lot of Texas whiskey has this, seem to has this, what I would consider to be like in sound, a deep mid range density. It's a good way to put it. Uh, not, yeah. not totally bassy, not really treble but sort of filling out this huge mid range. Yeah. 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 Well, let's try that. Let's try this now because I took two, um, I took, you know, two glasses and I filled them with a single component of one of the two blends. So I want to see if you can (laughs) nose and taste Uh these two samples. And guess which one they belong to. Yeah. Guess which one goes to which blend. Okay. So this was one, two. This is one and this is two. Well, I feel like I should smell them again. Okay. There she goes. Doing it well. Okay. So which one am I? Should... Either one. They're, they're, no, they're, one. It's closest. They're blind to you. So looks like Deb's in the comments. Okay. While I'm smelling, I want to ask Emma a question. So Emma. Yeah. Emma and I went to Bourbon Women's Symposium <clears throat> in the Oval last August, and it was so fun. Yeah. And Emma was super smart because she like tacked on extra days to either end and yeah. had, like she actually planned ahead of time these the additional distillery she was going to go and visit, which next time I'm going to do. And this time I'm going <laughs> to come. Oh, um, yeah, you get, get to come with me. I'm allowed. Yeah, you'll get to come to Kentucky and go to distilleries. Yeah, I know. Because that only I'm, took 13 never, years. I was never allowed to yeah. do that before. Anyway, um, so how did that experience of going and seeing bourbon and kind of in its birthplace impact what you're doing at Crowded Barrel? I think in general, the biggest, so I had never been to Kentucky before. Um, The only distillery tours I'd ever done were at Texas distilleries. And so I think in general, just seeing the volume of what they're doing was so impressive to me. It was just amazing i mean i remember them talking about how it took an hour to dump 11 barrels one day because they had equipment down and they're like man it was so much i'm just thinking it only took you an hour to do 11 barrels it takes me like three to do one barrel yeah (laughs) that's crazy yeah Um, Yeah. but i think uh, during the tours i got to hear from different people about different tasting methods that um just kind of opened up my eyes. So like I did a Buffalo Trace tour. It got to meet Freddie Johnson. It was amazing. Yeah. And he did um, two different 
intros to tasting whiskey and both of them are beneficial in my opinion to anyone whether you're a beginner to whiskey or someone experiencing whiskey yeah. kind of introduced it as um when you're introducing someone and bourbon is this intense like hard alcohol drink and they're not used to it it's like you take a sip of water with every single sip um, yeah. and just like let the whiskey touch your lips before you take a sip and then you take a sip but you're always like taking a sip of water first and keeping the water in your mouth and then taking a sip of the whiskey oh, with it. Oh, that's and um, when I did that, I was like, oh my gosh, this is creating a completely, I've had Buffalo Trace plenty of times and it's completely okay. changing the palate and it's giving me a different experience with this whiskey. And so I think even if you're not a beginner to whiskey, um, it's a great way to just do something different with your whiskey. And so I just learned really great tips on how to make the experience with whiskey better for yeah. people and more interesting and just different from what they're yeah. used to. Yeah. So well, that's awesome. take that away with me. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. Well, Daniel, we talked about last night, actually, mm -hmm. that you gave me one very early on. Yes. One of the best tips, um, actually confessional time. I don't even think I've told you this, <clears> before, <throat> but I remember we had like one of the first Texas whiskey association meetings. We went out to crowded barrel Yep. Um, and took the meeting there and had a call and Daniel's like, here, you want to try some of this? It's cash strength. And I was like, in the back of my head, I was like, Oh, this is like Eleanor no. one. It was like oh. Uh, oh, yeah. the first Eleanor. <laughs> I was like, I'm really scared. I've not been drinking very much. And, yeah. um, no, it's it was like 63% or something. But you talked about, <laughs> um, you gave me the advice of using the Topo Chico mm -hmm. and like opening it up. And that was like, so helpful. Cause that was such a great stepping stone for me to yeah. to get there and it's something i tell people all the time now it's like well try yeah. it this way you say you don't like it just try it this way and a lot of people come around but yeah i want to take a guess okay i think this is from blend this is blend number two right that, that's blend two yeah I this think is this the is sample in blend number two okay what do you think it is oh oh <laughs> if i know uh <laughs> Now we're drinking. Yeah, uh, there we go. <laughs> Wait, blend number two. Is it the, is it, oh, ooh. Ooh. I think it's either the Lone Elm or it's the Ranger Creek. So you, you first of all, you got it right. <gasps> so yes, that's really kind of okay. process of elimination. Yeah. Now. We're gonna, right. you know, don't worry about the yeah. other one. Hey, but, that's, that's called, no, no, no. That's not, that's called deductive tasting. That's right. We actually, you deduce. Uh, I deduce. Yeah. Yes. We should have, we should have got the deductive tasting I know. chart. Yeah. Um, no, I knew it wasn't treaty oak, but the bourbon, but I, yeah. You, you have a fan here. Hell if I know. Sarah Whelan, 24. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> How much better would it be what, if yeah, the president what, would just say that? <laughs> yeah, would it be Oh, no, like, no. Get up no, no. Oh, no. Oh, I know. <laughs> Stay home, folks. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. So that, that is Lone Elm. That, okay. And that's the, the dominant, in my yeah. opinion, the dominant note of, yeah. of that because it is 50%. And, and you're the thing that. that got me to the place where I knew it was blend number two is it, and I learned this the other night from Jared, is um, it had at the end, it was very tannic. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I thought the blend was as well at the end. Nice. That kind of stuck out to me a little bit. Nice. Um, Ooh, why don't you try the other one? You know okay. that you know that the other one is connected blend one. To, to blend one, but can you point out which distillery it is? Am I allowed to look at the bottom? <clears throat> no. Uh, I shouldn't have asked. I just make it hard. <laughs> I think this is an iron ring. <laughs> and by the way, for, for those of you that are in the comments, they, there's a oh, huge Facebook no. uh, chat going on and lots of activity going on on Facebook. If you're in uh, YouTube, you may... Be, feel very lonely, but trust us, there's a lot more on Facebook. But if you are on Facebook, feel free to move over to uh, YouTube and yeah. subscribe and and get in on the comments over there to make people feel a little bit Press less. Press here to subscribe. No, yeah, no, really, no, we no. don't Please have don't. that. We, um, we're, we're not doing that. Uh, I think this is Striker. <laughs> Man, she's so good. She's That's doing awesome. Good. Nice. Really, really well done. I mean, yeah. granted, Striker is very memorable. Yeah, yeah. But... But nice. Job. Let's do the well done Sarah dance. Well done, Sarah. 
Oh, well Addie's going to be so, so upset. Like when well we, done. When we first set up and we check the lighting, <laughs> I always dance. And now he's like, Mom, don't do that. Yeah. Don't, don't, do that. <laughs> don't do that, Mom. We're going to show her this tomorrow just to make oh, no. really, really yeah. sad. Oh, no. Yeah, our daughter... Our, <laughs> Our daughter's basically been our production assistant, like setting up, setting up the lights and the camera and the little yeah. logitech and everything. So yeah. it's really, really it's, fun. It's my- no, the other day I was in my studio and Cash walked in, my nine-year-old. Yeah. And I was playing back something I was working on and I hit stop and he looked at me and he goes, so uh, you sing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? What? <laughs> Uh, is, that, is that what you call me? <laughs> I'm a little, yeah. Oh man. Oh man. So I guess we're singing now. Yeah, I guess, I guess, right? I guess that's the thing. All right, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm actually super impressed. I think Thank you're, you. you've done a hell of a job. I think I have <clears> learned <throat> a lot yeah. this week. Yeah, I it's think been super helpful. By the end of this, by the end of this month, you're going to be damn near expert. Well, is it okay if I, Daniel? If I okay if I give her the sommelier medallion? Well, she is better looking. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> well, I have actually been wanting to take the psalm class. <clears throat> this has not worked out, so maybe after the seabed yeah. pandemic is over, I'll finally do that. Yeah, bring it on. And Gretchen, Gretchen, you gotta do it with me. Gretchen Galladay, we oh. talked about it. So. Yeah. So we have about 10 minutes left before the hour is up. But yeah. for those of you in the comments, if you have any questions for, for Daniel or Emma, please pop them in now. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll ask a couple and try not to distract mm-hmm. ourselves too badly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like, uh, you know, lo- lots of comments, lots of people, you know, chatting amongst themselves. It seems like a tribe meetup here. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's good. Um, that's how we roll. I have a question for Emma. We'll do it. Emma, yeah. do you have like, do you have something you gravitate towards when you're drinking for pleasure? Like that yeah. sounds weird, but you know what I mean? Like you're not, I'll stop. So like, is it bourbon? Is it Do sweet? tell Emma. I Do really tell. love Lefroig. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything from them. Yeah. Always. Yeah. There's a running joke in the tribe that someday I hope somebody looks at me the way that Emma looks at Lefroig. <laughs> <laughs> now, did, did you like get into Lafroig immediately, like on first sip, or was it something that you had to work your way into? It was just right away. It was actually when I first met Daniel. So I'm I'm introduced to Daniel, and he's like, "Oh, you like whiskey? Here, try this, try this, try this, try this," and just like put all <laughs> of these samples at like one of the academy, mm-hmm. yeah, like happy hour things. And it was the first time I ever had Lafroig, and I was like, "Ooh." I've always liked whiskey, but I love this whiskey. And it just clicked. And I kind of got stuck in that world for a little bit. It took some yeah. time for me to like branch back out and be like, no, no, no there are other whiskeys that deserve your attention. Yeah. There's so what's your second many, many amazing. Um, ooh, that's a hard one. I or like category. It doesn't, have to, like <laughs> it doesn't have to be a brand, but like if you're not going to do Lafroig, is it like bourbon? Is it single malt? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Deb. <laughs> oh no, we, and, for sure. I do. And Christina love and Josh that. are kicking off the fight between Arbig and Lafroig in the comments now. Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry, guys. No. Sorry. What's your second, Emma? <laughs> um, I do like. I think Irish whiskey is a category that I really could drink anytime. Whether it's like I want to go for um, something that's a little more complex and nuanced versus yeah. even just like. Oh, I'm at a bar and they have Jameson. Great. I'll take a Jameson. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's a category that like, whether it's budget or nice, like I could do any Irish whiskey and be happy. Yeah. Well, that's what we're getting to try tomorrow night, right? From Deep Elm. Aren't they yes. Irish style? They're Irish style. They're <laughs> 51% <laughs> uh, malted barley, 51%. Or Wait, are they releasing that now? It's coming. It's coming. Okay. Because I have not gotten a bottle, and I was about to be really upset. No, we have, we have a, a little, sample. We have a sample. Okay. Sneak okay. Sneak peek that we're gonna try and talk about, and yeah, yeah. Because it's been a while since we've had it. Um, here's a question from Bruce. He says, "Does any anyone know of a whiskey bonder in Texas, like old fashioned bonders in England?" What do you mean, like? Clarify that. I'm not sure. I've heard of old fashioned bonders. 
I'm guessing he's. I'm guessing he's talking about like uh, like independent bottling. Yeah, an independent bottler. I'm guessing, kind of like okay. a. Okay. Um, I don't think there is. Um, maybe you know. Yes. No, there are. There are in Texas. There's us. That's it. <laughs> well, right. Yes. I mean, as far as independent bottling, <laughs> yeah. yes. Yeah, but no, the Crowded Barrel Alliance is independent bottling of other people's whiskeys. Yes. Right. Now there is a growing, amazing movement of independent models in the U.S., and that's doing it's great. Even the SMWS, the Single Malt or Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, is yeah. starting to bottle Texas whiskey, like Valconis, for example. Uh -huh. Right. So we're not it anymore, but we yeah. we were one of the. Uh, and I think actually, I think Valconis has been working with uh, that boutique and things like that. So Valconis is like way in the forefront of the independent bottling in Texas. Period. So. Um, so how 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 many Alliance series releases do you have now? Because you have the two blends, but you also have like Iron Root and Balcones. Right? And I think we've done six now because we mm -hmm. had the Wyoming first and Iron Root. Mm -hmm. Wyoming. Um, we did the first blend, and then we had another Iron Root Balcones in the second blend, and I think that's all of them. And we're about to release two more. Mm -hmm. okay. Two more with new distilleries that we haven't done before. So I'm really excited. Mm -hmm. That'll awesome. be fun. Awesome. Um, oh, one thing we should talk about before we sure. wrap up. Um, so we've ended up talking every night about like one of my favorite cocktails at each distillery. We kind of stumbled upon that. Yes. So I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about and I don't know what it's called. Um, Gretchen got me onto it, but it's the coffee and the heavy cream and uh -huh. What to, to yes. the product? Because I don't remember everything that's in it, but so good. Emma, you remember? So we we created that recipe when we got back from Ireland. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, they were making that was their Irish whiskey recipe when we were in Ireland, and so we just made that with uh, bourbon instead of Irish whiskey, and then we made it with uh, used oak, Eleanor, okay. instead of Irish whiskey. Yeah, yeah, but essentially, you just add uh, um, whiskey, then coffee, cold coffee already cold right and or not hot coffee or cold coffee depending on which one we did, i did it iced because i thought it was amazing yeah um, oh, and it. then the only sweetness you put in it is in the cream and that's the trick don't put sugar in it have the cream have sweetness usually with like a vanilla uh vanilla extract. what's the word i'm looking for thank you vanilla extract mm -hmm. so whip whipped cream with vanilla extract and that's the only sweetness you get and oh yeah so good. It is so good. So good. Really good in the summer too. Like yes. yeah. ice surprisingly is so amazing. Yeah. And we did it iced. Yeah. 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 So I think we just call it iced whiskey coffee. Hey. Yeah. Sounds about right. Simple, yeah. Right? Yeah. I got very yeah. creative with my cocktail names. Richard does a better job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, sometimes it's easier to remember if it just if it says what it is, then you know. And you can remember and here's a and whiskey. here's yeah. a Patreon question. Is the used oak Eleanor currently available on Patreon? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we have we're actually going through the, we just released the 9.7, so we're going through mm -hmm. tiers with bottle sales for that right now. Nice. Yeah, I think we so still have some left. Yeah. Yeah, we have a quite a bit of it left. So I think good. it's still good. far. So, so why don't you tell people, um, because the rules in Texas are weird right now. We can do things that we couldn't usually do, like online sales and curbside pickup outside the distillery and things like that. So <clears throat> I'm going to correct something that keeps uh, get, being thrown around. You could always do online sales. Always. You still have to abide by the in-person pickup limitations. Yes. Right. So it turns out we, because when we were first starting and we were talking to our lawyer, Kimberly, and saying, look, all of our people are on the internet. What do we do? And yeah. she's like, well, sell them, sell them whiskey. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but we can't do that. She's like, no, you can sell it to him. You just can't give it to him. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, what we do to stay above board is we take all the online sales up front. We hold the whiskey for up to two years for them to come pick it up. And we pay all the taxes on the date that we sold it. Right. So that everyone is happy. And then, you know, a year and a half later, if they come pick up the bottle, then that's when the state considers them to have being, been a part of a transaction. Yes. And at that point, they have to abide by the 1500 milliliter every 30 days per person rule for pickup. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and the, the, the difference now is that the online sale can occur and then the transaction can take place outside of the distillery at a curbside. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit right. different. 
But um, so, so what can people do to support you now um, as a distillery as besides the Patreon and what, what could people do to support credit barrel through all of this mess right now? Emma, what do you think? I think just anytime we have a, a bottle release that, you know, makes it through our Patreon, just buying bottles and we have merch that we're selling in the tasting room and um, just being there when we open back up. You so, know, yeah. When, when May rolls around and we get to open our doors back up, just showing our bartenders some love. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll keep everybody in, uh, for, informed of when the the rules mm -hmm. are going to be re relaxed and when people are going to get to meet each other again. And uh, first of all, thank you guys for doing this so yes. much. Uh, thank to, you. To you. Yes. Cheers to your Cheers. health on this. Um, we, we thank you for being here tonight and we hope that everybody in the comments is going to come back to the Texas whiskey trail as soon as we're all back open and, and going. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, uh, you guys have a great night. Any, anything, any last words, Daniel, for, for the, the <laughs> legion of, of tribe members who are here? No, it was time? good to see you guys. Aww. Aww. I've kind of, I've kind of missed you. I haven't seen these guys for a while. So that's, I know. Well, when we were nice. talking at the Texas Whiskey Festival and... Um, Doesn't that feel like decades ago at yeah, this point? Yeah, and we had no idea all of this. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, you know. And that was what, like a month ago? I know. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it feels like another world. But yeah. folks, we... Pre oh, Jake Clements is in there. So founder of the Texas Whiskey Festival. So Jake's Cheers. there too. So, cheers to you, Jake. Uh, cheers to all y'all. To your health. We appreciate you. And uh, y'all take, take care. And we're going to leave you with the video that we started with in case you missed it. Uh, it's a good little fun <laughs> to end your night. So all y'all take care. Okay. Bye. Bye guys. Cheers. Cheers.